Hey guys, how's it going? So I wanted to go through and make a video on uh, the Bond ID lab that we're going to be doing. Uh, this is going to be a big four day lab and I want to make sure that everyone has plenty of time to do it. So I'm going to make this video and have you guys watch it on virtual Monday. That way when Tuesday comes, you can get right to it. So let's first talk about what this lab is going to be about. Uh, remember we talked about ionic bonds, polar covalent, nonpolar covalent, metallics. Uh, all, we have these four different bonds that we've talked about. And then we also talked about the, uh, the, the properties of these bonds a little bit. And the properties of these bonds um, can help us identify a material. If we have some unknown material in front of us, we have no idea what this is. It's, you know, a lot of chemicals just look like white powder. So we need to know what it is we're dealing with. Um, there's a reason why, like in alien movies, uh, if there's some unknown substance, they immediately put it in like a container and lock it down because who knows how it's going to react? Uh, who knows what properties it has? So what we're going to be doing is going through and looking at the properties of different bonds. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to give you four different samples. These samples are going to be sodium chloride, uh, sucrose, uh, wax, and aluminum. Okay, so this is going to be your ionic. This is going to be your polar covalent. Wax is going to be nonpolar, and aluminum is going to be metallic. So I'm going to give you these four, and we're going to go through and perform three different experiments on all four of these guys. And we are going to then determine their properties. So real quick, uh, I kind of, I'm going to spoil this for you a little bit, uh, because here are their properties. Um, so for ionic, uh, or the, the tests we're going to be doing is a melting point, a solubility test, and then a conductivity test. So for melting point, uh, this is just when does it melt? Does it melt at low temperatures, at high temperatures, uh, so on and so forth. For this, we're just going to stick with high and low. We're not going to get into an actual number. Uh, so uh, for ionic compounds, they melt when it's high, polar covalent and nonpolar are low and metallic is high. So that's gonna be our first test. Our next test is gonna be solubility. Does it dissolve in a solvent? There are two different types of solvent we're gonna be using, polar and nonpolar. So does it dissolve? For ionic, it does dissolve in polar and it kinda of dissolves in nonpolar. Um, some of them do, some of them don't. Um, it's you'll see uh, for polar covalent remember like dissolves like so for polar covalent polar solvents will uh, dissolve them nonpolar like dissolves like so that's a nonpolar solvent and then metallics don't dissolve doesn't matter what you put them in they'll they won't dissolve so that is going to be our second test our second experiment a third test here is going to be conductivity. So does this conduct electricity? Uh, we have little conductivity testers, uh, little little instruments with little prongs that whenever you stick it into a solution or a material, it will say, yes, I'm conducting electricity or no, I'm not conducting electricity. And for most things, don't really conduct as a solid. Uh, ionic, polar covalent, nonpolar covalent, don't really conduct as a solid. So if I were to stick this, uh, these prongs into a material uh, that's any of those three, it won't, it won't register. Metallics, as you could imagine, does conduct electricity. You know, that's how wires work. Um, so there's that. And then we're going to see conductivity solution uh, in solution. So that solution salt water solution uh, does it conduct electricity yes yes it does 
polar covalence, they do slightly, a little bit, not much. Uh, Non-polar covalent, nope, doesn't do it. And then metallics are in A, not available, because it they don't dissolve. You can't make a metallic solution. So there's there's that. Okay, so we're going to go through now, and I'm going to describe each of these three tests. So first off is melting point. So we have a ring stand. Okay, what you're going to do is build a little platform on the ring. Let me draw the ring this way. Hey, there's a ring, ring stand. Uh, there's the ring. We're going to wrap this in aluminum foil. Uh, make a little platform out of it and i want you to make a little a little divot a little valley uh four little valleys here so we can put in our samples so we can have sample a sample b sample c and sample d okay so you're gonna do that you're gonna want a small amount in here when i say small amount what do i mean uh i mean about the size of a match head so I'm sure everyone has, uh, you know, either played with matches or lit a match or seen a match or seen a match in a movie. Uh, I think everyone has a good idea of what a match head is. Uh, that's the size of sample I want you to be putting in here. So whenever I say small amount, match head. So a small amount of each uh, substance in here. So remember that's sodium chloride, sucrose, wax, and aluminum. Then, since this is a melting point, we're going to have a Bunsen burner. And that Bunsen burner is going to be lit. And then you wait and you rank them based on when they melted. So let's say C melted first. C is in first place. D melts next. D is in second place. And then B melted third and then a just didn't melt you know we'll say uh, did not melt dmn dnm all right so how uh this is going to be kind of our um our results it would probably be better if you put this in a data table of some sort so you can say a b c d and you can say melting point. You can be like high, low, low, high. Um, what are we considering high? What are we considering low? Um, if it melts within the first minute or two, like if these two melted in the first minute, then that's going to be low. Uh, if this guy took five full minutes to melt, then it's it's high. If And, it, and of course, if it didn't melt, then that means our... Um, our Bunsen burner just isn't getting hot enough. So it's higher than what the Bunsen burner is. So uh, there's that. You also might want to put in a notes column because uh, let's say that, you know, if A was high, you can say uh, over here, you know, did not melt. Uh, if D was high, then you could say it took five minutes. Okay, maybe C was really low, but it turned to a black goo. You can write black goo. There we go. All right. So yeah, it's, an, it's a good idea to kind of put notes down on that. Um, this notes thing is going to be useful later. You're going to see why. All right. So that's going to be your first one. Remember? This is going to be your first experiment. And since this is an experiment, it gets its own title, uh, description, hypothesis, materials and methods, and results, conclusions, and future work. You're going to write up a full lab report on this guy. Okay. Uh, then you're going to go through and do the solubility test. So this is going to be solubility. This is going to be pretty easy. You have test tubes. You fill test tube up with your solvent. Let's say it's H2O. That's going to be our first solvent. You guys remember H2O is polar. So this is a polar solvent. 
Remember, H2O is a polar molecule. And then you're going to take that match head quantity again, that small amount, and then you're just going to put it in the test tube. Shake it up a little bit, wait a little bit. You might want to uh, flick it around, um, agitate it, get it, uh, try to get it to dissolve. And if it dissolves, check mark, it dissolved. So A, B, C, D, uh, maybe X for no, it didn't dissolve, check if it does, so on and so forth. Uh, again, it might be, a, uh, and the, 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 you're also going to do this again with hexane. You guys remember hexane? Hexane is going to be your non-polar, your non-polar solvent. Uh, you're going to go through and do the same thing. Most of these are going to say nothing, and then, bam, one of them actually did dissolve. There we go. Now, you might want uh, another notes section. Notes. Because if salt takes a long time to dissolve, you need to know that. Ionic compounds may take a while to dissolve. Maybe polar substances take a little bit of time to dissolve. Maybe a nonpolar substance uh, looks weird whenever it's dissolving. Uh, maybe the metallics do something. I don't know. Uh, it's always a good idea to put down these notes. Okay. So you're going to be doing this with H2O and hexane. Small amount in there. Shake it about. See what happens. Um, yep. Okay. Last thing is the conductivity. Like I said, you're, uh, we have these conductivity testers. There's a little battery here, a bunch of circuitry, and two light bulbs here okay and some prongs what we're going to do is you're going to get an amount of your material stick the prongs into it and see if the these lights light up that's it uh this is that's for the solid for the solution what i would suggest is grab the solution uh that you had before put it in a beaker and then put the tongs into the solution and see if the lights light up. There's that. Now, uh, on this conductivity tester, there's gonna be two lights. There's gonna be a green light and a red light. If, there, if the green light lights up, that means slightly, it's a little bit. Slight, um, a slight charge is going through. It's conducting a mm, little bit. If you see a red light come up though, that means that it's very conductive. So uh, again, you're gonna, your results are going to be another data table, A, B, so on and so forth. And B as a solid, as a solution. And then you might go through and say slight or very or no, something like that. Okay, so those are gonna be your three experiments. Now, let's go through and talk about grading. So this is gonna be how I'm gonna go through and grade it. Uh, I think there's 75, 50, 70. How many is this? One sec. Five plus three plus three plus 1.5 plus three plus 15 plus 7.5 plus three plus nine plus 25. 75 points. So this is going to be 75 points. It's worth three labs so it's a big one but it's um not that bad this is going to be a good can could be a good boost to your grade so like i said you're going to be going through and writing up full-on lab reports descriptions hypotheses materials methods results conclusions uh future work for all three of those tests so that's going to be times three 
for your knowns. Okay, so three no uh, three lab reports for those knowns, and then after you're done, you're gonna get something that looks like this. You'll know what all of these are. And not only that, you'll have those notes saying kind of actually what they look like. And you can remember, oh, right, ionics have a high melting point. They don't actually melt much. Um, okay, so you can, you've gone through and seen that. After you're done with all of that, I am going to hand you four unknowns. Okay, I have about 30 some different substances that I'm going to be doling out to you guys. So you and your group are going to be getting four numbers. And then you'll go into the back, you'll see little cups with different numbers on them. And that is going to be your material that you're going to be using. So you have that. The You might get number two, number four, number 10, and number 30, let's say. Okay. You're going to go through and do those exact same three tests again, this time, and three lab reports, but this time you're going to have unknowns. These are not going to be all the same. I, I These are random. I'm going to randomly assign these. So that means you might have four ionic compounds. You might have four metallic compounds. You could have two metallics and two nonpolars. I don't know. It's, it's going to be random. So um, that's what you're going to do. Oh, before you, I, you get your uh, unknowns, you're going to make for me a flow chart. Let me talk about the flow chart real quick. Uh, the purpose of lab reports is to uh, give it to someone else, someone who may not be familiar with chemistry, and they should be able to run through what you did. A flowchart is going to be a, a little decision tree that you're going to make about bond identification. So you're going to start at the top. You have your material. You have no idea what it is. Then the flowchart goes to a test. So maybe you start with melting point first. And this test has two possible results. It can be a high melting point or a low melting point, right? And so then that leads to another test. Well, let's say this is solubility now. And that solubility can be uh, polar, nonpolar, or neither, right? And then you might have another test. And eventually, you should get to a, a decision. So after all of this, you now know, ah, yes, this is a nonpolar, nonpolar substance. Okay, there are dozens, if not hundreds of different ways that you can make this decision tree. Uh, I've seen some really cool ones. I've seen some that are a little complicated and that they could probably have simplified a bit. Uh, but try to make it as easy to use as possible and label it well. You can, uh, you don't need to make, uh, abbreviations like I did. You can actually write out a full melting point test and then, uh, have that. So once you've done that, you'll receive your, uh, your unknown substances, go back. You're going to be doing three more. Uh, experiments with your unknown substances and that means three more lab reports yes you're gonna have to be doing six total lab reports here so three for your unknown three for your known and then at the very end you're going to identify these guys so again let's say you did two four twelve and thirty right I want a nice long uh, table here and you're going to put out all your results summarize them for me melting point solubility uh, conductivity all of those guys and at the very end you're going to have id okay so you're going to go through and say like okay yeah this had a high melting point it was soluble and polar 
and it was not conductive. So that means it is ionic. Great. And this one you go through, there's a high melting point. It didn't dissolve. You know, it was very conductive. Ah, that's metallic. Okay. This is a low melting point. It dissolved in a polar sol solution. It was not conductive. That means it's a nonpolar. Okay. And then you know, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, this identification is going to be 25 points of your grade. That's a third of this grade. So every single one of these, uh, all you need is if number two is ionic, that's 6.25 points. If number four is metallic, there it is. If number 12, oh, maybe you messed up and number 12 isn't nonpolar. Well, then you just lost a couple of points there. Um, because of human error and things like that, maybe you'll call something low melting point when it's really not. And uh, the other tests, the solubility and the conductivity still point to metallic. If you count, if you go through and say, well, I know it says low melting point, but the other two really are pointing to metallic and you write down metallic, you're good. You have identified it as metallic. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. That's going to be everything. There's, uh, this is a, is a big lab. Uh, I'm, I'm coming up on 20 minutes now. So I'm going to end this before people stop watching. Uh, please watch this at some point. Uh, because on Monday, we're just going to, or I'm sorry, on Tuesday, we're just going to jump right down into it. All right. I'll see you guys on Tuesday. Um, have a good one.